So hello out there in Packer Nation and welcome to another edition of the Absolute Packer Podcast. We are on episode number 79 uh, and we are, <laughs> we're going to title this episode, What Happened to Pam Oliver? And that is, uh, it, it's kind of a, a term of endearment and concern because uh, the sideline reporter, she had, she had um, an incident where she was being, inter- or she was, yeah, she was talking, at, this is out of halftime right and half she was, time. she was either drunk like really drunk, like sloshed up or something else happened. So I uh, don't want to say, you know, you were drunk or you're having a stroke, but there's concern there. Um, but I digress. Uh, the more important thing is that the Green Bay Packers dispatched at the Rams in pretty convincing fashion. Uh, so we are going to the NFC Championship game, and it is going to be at Lambeau Field for the first time in Aaron Rodgers' career. That Still, I mean, it's it sounds so great to say it, but the fact that we are saying it is so odd that it's the this is his fifth NFC Championship game. Yep, and uh, so Nuts. think about that. It's never had it at home. Um, and the last one we had at home was the last season that Favre was our quarterback. So. I was at that game. <laughs> yeah, and I'll never forget. I'll never ever forget that when I was walking out of the stadium after the end, I said, "If it's going to be that damn cold, the least you could do is win the game." I was so mad that they lost that it was that cold. Because, yes, I went to that game. Um, you know what? I, look, the Rams – oh, sorry. Getting ahead of myself. I got all flustered by the Pam Oliver thing. Um, so I am Andrew Hetzel, and with me, as always, is Jeremy Houchel and Elliot Christensen. Hello. Now, Elliot is back at Lambeau Field from sunny Florida. It's true. He uh, he didn't get kidnapped by Scientologists, so he's uh, he came back unscathed. That's good. Yep. But he's yep. got to be cold. Uh, you know what? Actually, so when the day we left, it was actually rainy and in the lower fifties there. Good lord! And, and and you brought it back here. And yeah. it really and, it, <laughs> and it's not much colder than that right now here. I don't know. It's yeah. It's it, it's fine. It not was complaining. It was balmy. For Green Bay standards. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how much the weather played a factor today. Uh, maybe a little bit. But, I mean, in a way, I'm kind of glad because the results of this game, we were clearly the better team. Um, the Rams were down. You know, Aaron Donald was in and out. Um, and, look, when he's on, he might be the best defensive player at any position. He's so dominant. Uh it's clear that he was either banged up worse than let on or he got hurt early in the game or yada, 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 as they would say in Seinfeld. Right. (laughs) Um, So not having him uh, definitely hurt uh, the Rams defense, but he still did play. And look, um, Aaron Rodgers, I'll tell you what, he had a phenomenal game. He looked, he looked fantastic. He had one. I would say the worst play for him in the game was the overthrow to MVS. In the I think it was late in the third quarter. He had him. I mean, it would have been if he hit him in stride or even close, it would have been uh, a touchdown. Now he's throwing to MVS, so we don't know if he's going to catch it. Um, right, right. But outside of that, there there were. Um, oh, I should also say we are recording this right after the game, so we're kind of riffing here. You know, we don't. I don't have uh, my detailed set of notes here. Um, which actually I never have notes. I just wait. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) But uh, there were two plays in this game by Rodgers that I had to pick my job off the floor. The first was the touchdown scramble he had for a rushing touchdown where he pump faked and then he juked. I mean, the guy, like the guy is 37 years old. It's not like he's in his prime anymore. And it was, He looked great there. And then the other was when the pocket just collapsed on him and he had to get off his spot and he didn't even completely get set. And he threw a dart down the sideline, probably about at least 30 yards down the field to Tanyan, who picked up another like 20 yards. Those Both times he made it look easy. Oh, my word. And I mean, look, what look, he's got to win the MVP. Um, I I just don't see how he can't. and it's not like this game didn't have any bearing on it because it's a regular season award. But if anything, it just further solidified how well he's playing. And those, those, um, those two play. There's, 
there's not any other quarterback in the league that can maybe Mahomes, but I don't even know about that. You know, it's just Rogers got all this savvy. Um, it, it was, I'm glad he showed up. The, the whole team played great. The offensive line played fantastic. That They're my MVP. They played out of their mind. One quarterback hit zero sacks that is against a defense that had the second most sacks in the league yeah and they were the number one defense in the league and we almost put a 5-0 on them (laughs) i i you know i say that all the time because i i never know exactly how much of of the success of a quarterback to apportion to to the offensive line sure oh i agree that's always difficult for me to parse out. It's even now, harder I, with Rodgers because he does so much scrambling and so yeah, much off schedule stuff. Right. So he used to make an, a mediocre offensive lines look really fine. I agree. And and I think this year it's both. So it's amazing. I don't know. They're, but it's it's fun to watch. A good sign whether or a telltale sign of of knowing whether the offensive line is really kicking butt is watching the running game. Agreed. And when you see the holes that they had on multiple runs with Aaron Jones, with Jamal Williams, I mean, that tells you that they are controlling the line of scrimmage. I mean, and sure. that that is my MVP for the game because without the offensive line frustrating the heck out of this Rams defense, I mean, you could tell, I think it was a second quarter, uh, Aaron Donald and J- Jalen Ramsey, they're, they're, they're two best players. They were, were on frustrated the as hell. They were frustrated. You could tell the, you could just see the frustration in their face. And this team, we, they were just starting to melt. You know what I mean? Um, so offensively, I mean, you know, You'd everybody had, to see it. everybody did great, you know, but I, I have to throw the MVP to the offensive line because they were going to be the ones that were going to determine whether we were going to win this game or play a really, really, you know, um, uh, real close, you know, and back and forth type game. And it really wasn't that, even though the score didn't dictate, I agree. you know, it I got just, tight. It did. I, look, I was, I was kind of pacing back and forth in my house by myself in COVID times. <laughs> Nobody else. <did. laughs> and I'm just like, when it got to within one score and I think the Packers went three and out after that. And I was like, ah, but then they, they did what the good teams need to do, especially in the playoffs. They, from there on out, they closed it. The defense held. On a fourth down, and then the, I mean, no. well, and then then the, you know the the play that they were setting the whole game up for was the Lazard. play action to Lazard that put the game out of reach, you know, and they um they you could tell they were holding on to that one until I mean they they had to wait until they 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 could they could uh, take a shot and it was that the, that was in the fourth quarter, was it not? Yep. Yeah, I think it was like mid fourth quarter. No. Yep. Something like that. Um, and look, Lazard, you love to see these guys get redemption because he dropped an easy ball earlier in the third quarter i think that would have probably been a touchdown too yeah and that was what's what's interesting about the timing of those that particular play with where lazard dropped it it was right after rogers on the same drive where rogers overthrew mbs yes so they almost like kind of cancel each other that was this yeah. weird little thing but um but mbs even had a good game and look at the end of the game it was third down and they threw a little like a little four yard out route and he had to finagle a bunch of stuff and look he had to reach to get that first down, MVS, and um, even little plays like that to, to start to get it out of reach, it was it was great to see. I mean, Todd, they played they played great. Um, now the Rams again, the Rams were they were more banged up than the Packers were, um, but st- look, the Rams had well. Actually, let me take a step back. Last week when they played Seattle, did Aaron Donald get hurt early or late in that game? It was in the late third quarter. Okay. Um, I'm kind of splitting hairs here. I mean, look, they're a number, they were the number one defense, right? Um, basically number one across the, they were great against the run and the pass. Jalen Ramsey, all pro. And look, Devontae didn't um, dominate him, but oh boy, I'll tell you what, that first touch, that, that well, it was the only touchdown he had where he reversed motion. The double motion, that was that, phenomenal. That was one, that was like, when, when I watch that play, and right when I watch it unfold, I go, he's not going to be able to get to Devontae. Nope. There, there's no way. If he goes, he has to go under, and he won't get there quick enough, and he can't go over because there's a guy. He got clogged up by his own guy. It was like, I think it was like a, like a pick route in some respects. But well, the, the one, uh, sorry, real quick, the one thing I thought about that particular play and the design of it, going back to the past, you'd never see McCarthy run that play. 
No, there's no that, chance. And that wasn't a call play. If you watch the um, the action beforehand, you could see Rodgers was looking at Devontae. And, and then when it was Devontae a look that made him switch out, and fly back. Well, and when Devontae was lined out wide, they actually had too high safety coverage over him. So they were pretty much doubling over the top. And when Rodgers put him in motion, they it was so beautiful because you saw Ramsey go with him, and what you knew then was a man on man coverage. And when he was going to get to uh, Jalen Ramsey all the way to the left tackle side, the play was done for the Rams because there's no way Ramsey can get all the way across. Exactly. And then over the defensive back that was in the slot there, and it sounded like you know or it looked like Jalen Ramsey wanted that uh, that cornerback to uh, slide out and get on Devontae, but he was covering. I think it was either Tanyan. Um, or MVS underneath. So he was kind of in a, in limbo. It was, and he knew it. He was like, ah, he was running over there. Uh-oh. They executed the crap out of I all mean, Rogers. Rogers had to throw that thing really hard. It was like a quick out, but he had to just right. Obviously he had to rifle it and he did. And it was, um, that was, that was a beautiful, that was one of the better play calls I've seen out of the LaFleur. What, so you say it's not necessarily a play call, but it's, is it, is it, is it in the, um, the progression of, what you could call it the line based on, I guess it's yeah. based on what the defense shows you. So, yeah. so what I'm getting at is I'll give credit to Rogers and Adams, but also the floor. Well, yeah, I there's, I mean, you could, you could congratulate everybody in that play because that was, you know, and Pam Oliver. Good job. <laughs> she was, she was, I, I got was she drinking at that time? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> look, we, uh, I, I, I hope she's okay. I mean, it looked like a mini stroke. Yeah. I, it was yeah. weird. It was just, it really hit me when I saw it. I was, I was like, I know I was like they're going to pull the camera off her, but um, yeah, I don't know. Weird. I think we're going to, we're going to find out. El- Elliot said that she was trending that you know, on yeah, Twitter. It was trending on Twitter. It still might be, who knows? And nobody knows what the heck happened. So I was like, it was, it was so weird. It was to the point where <laughs> I, I can't believe nobody on camera commented about it. Like well, not even just like, anything you know I, like what is daryl johnson's gonna say He'd be like oh pam she's hammered <laughs> no 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 but just like something like to let us know that she's okay yeah and they yeah, know no that kidding. You'd be like oh she didn't have a stroke she's just hammered <laughs> I, I i i don't know or like oh it sounds like it's really cold out there pam <laughs> yeah no kidding really <laughs> Sounds like you've been warming yourself up with the old. I whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, I hear and that. See, that's the thing. I feel. I almost feel bad because it's like we don't know. No, we don't. <laughs> and I don't want it to come out that I'm bashing on her. And I hope medical. You know what? I, I hope. I hope she had something to drink and she was trying to stay warm. I yeah. Hope, I hope that, she, or I hope she was just uh, uh, uncomfortably cold, and we can all just laugh yeah, about. Because otherwise, the, the, the yeah. other the other alternatives are not. No, it's terrible. That's I, how weird it was. It really yeah, struck me. Yeah. Oh, it was weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, back to football. Um, so, I mean, the, what was the, the Packers to open the game? I thought they were going to get a touchdown on that opening drive. Um, I was disappointed, but they got three points. But I, I, at the same time, I was like, okay, this is the number one defense. Pump, pa- uh, points and pa- whatever is going to be hard to come by. All P's. Points, passes, punts, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, and then they, then they ended up, I mean, what else can you say? You can't, I mean, there's, I think you've, you've taken all the super, superlatives out and threw them into this game and, and, uh, they all fit like, <laughs> and I loved know? what they were doing with the running game. I think the offense okay. game plan was great. So it is safe to assume though, that since we played the number one defense, and it is the playoffs. No. no. <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go there. That that's like that's like the the TV broadcaster saying, I, you know what? I know. Mason Crosby's twenty for twenty on field goals, and then he, you know you just jinx them. So no, I you thought you were Elliot. I see. I thought I'm going to take the Machiavellian line on this. I thought you were saying that, and you're and it was going to be like we beat the number one defense. Therefore, we now have the number one defense. Well, Devonte Adams in the after game said, you know. You just topped the number one defense. Who can stop you? And he said, nobody. Oh, I love Devontae. Devontae looked possessed in this game. When they had it like him zoomed in, he looked like he was like, man, he looked, he had, he had his game face. And the, you time. know what? And we've been waiting for half the season for that. You know, like the mm-hmm. second half of the season is when they needed to kick in with that. And they did. 
You know what's great too that you don't really think about with like uh, a De- having a Devonte Adams and, and practicing against your own defense. I mean, you got every week you got Jair and Devonte practicing against each other. That's think about how think about how much that helps both of them. And Jair, I think he had a better game than Ramsey. Oh, hands down, he did. Jeremy, who called him one B and not one A of the cornerbacks. Sack. What? Oh, well, you mean we're... comparing Jalen? Well, you know what? Every dog is going to have its day. I'm sorry. Like... I want to eat crow. Get out some crow. Okay, fine. I, where I, the, I will. Where did that will. phrase come from? I don't know. I want to see this happen now because I've I never know. seen crow being eaten. It's just a weird. I'm going to have to look that up. Set it up. <laughs> Set it up. <laughs> um, Sounds but disgusting. The, look, I think one of my favorite defensive plays was when Jair came slamming in and tackled a guy basically for a loss. Um, I can't, it was like a quick out, and he it was either no game, but it's like he is a shutdown corner who loves to tackle. And he and I'm not talking about Ramsey. <laughs> I'm talking about Alexander. Um, and he loves to tackle and wrap up. You know, it's just you could not ask for. He's a complete. He's a complete cornerback in every respect. You know, he's a great blitzer when they do call on him to blitz. He's a great tackler. He shuts down everything. It's just, um, and he's Gutekunst's first Gutekunst overall pick in his tenure. I think the play that really just made you go, whoa, uh, was when uh, uh, Adams ran that slant in the third quarter on Ramsey and Ramsey yeah, almost and fell on his back. Ooh, like, yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, I mean, you know what? He did that a few times this game where his feet, he just burnt them right off the line, not with any speed, but it's just quickness. the quickness of his feet. Nobody, look, no, right now, nobody's better off the line than him. Mm-hmm. And he's, I, I don't know what his stats were. I mean, at a touchdown. Nine I catches, say, 66 yards and a touchdown. Okay. I mean, look, against a Ramsey, that's pretty darn good. And he had a touchdown. Well, they, they did motion a lot of out of coverage of Ramsey. So, um, and they, and what they did too, is they would motion. They were Jones. moving Devante around a lot. Well, they, and then motion Jones out towards Devante. And then um, the way that the coverage was set, J- Ramsey had to swing out to Jones. And then um, Adams was in the slot, technically uh, up against a safety or a linebacker. So, you know, they, they did so many things to move him around to get him open. Uh, they schemed him open and it was, it was pure science. It really was. It was beautiful. Um, so the, you know, our defense played well. Um, yeah. I wouldn't say they were lights out, but they played really well. Um, when they needed the one it. thing, yeah, the one thing that I think this is, I don't know moving forward for the NFC championship or Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to crack my knuckles and nothing cracked. I thought we weren't supposed to go there. thought you're not supposed to say that we're going to win. Well, I, I scrapped. Jeremy, we'll Jeremy come back. Yes, we'll come back. Jeremy just gave me the smackdown for that, and then you, and then there's nothing. We'll, well come back count. to this. I, I'm exempt. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I lost my train of thought. Uh, oh, the defense. So yeah, real. <laughs> I had a Pam Oliver moment. Oh boy. Uh, so now we're talking about the defense, and uh, look when the when the the Rams on offense, the only time they got anything going was when they did hurry up. And boy, um, like they scored their first touchdown on her, two of their touchdowns for sure. And I look, I, I looked at that and I was like, I don't know how many teams have run no huddle on us. Um, I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to that. But in this game, th- that worried me. You know, th- there, there's a blueprint there in some respects. You got to think that other people are going to try and run no. If they can. I mean, look, Tom, if Tom Brady comes in or Drew Brees, pretty savvy quarterbacks. I mean, it's easy, I guess, to just say that, but but what did you think about the the no huddle they're running up against this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, it looked like the Packers were pretty much out of sync there, and and they were in a in a soft two deep two deep zone, um, so they weren't playing man. And it, it was funny because when you watch their sacks, all of their sacks are five sacks. The Packers that's disgusting. Got, Why would they I were be in man their coverage? Sacks? I've got nothing. Jer- Jeremy had his Pam Oliver <laughs> moment. I've got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. No, I was just well, like say, I was telling Elliot before this. I said I'm in a great mood now. I was in a pretty good mood, but now that they won and we got an championship, be. man, 
take me. So I, I'm just jolly. You should be. You should be in a good mood. No, I, I it, the, on the sacks that they had, the Packers had, they were all in man coverage. So they were shutting down the receivers. And, um, you know, on two of the scoring drives the Rams had, one before halftime um, and then in the third quarter, uh, they moved the ball with ease down the field because yes. they were in that, you know, um, high speed motion or whatever. But like it, I'm not too worried about the overall. Part of me wonders if they knew it was coming. You would have to think, but. Well, see, Pettin plays, he plays, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like two with man himself. algebra. He plays with himself. He plays with himself in his sack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Yay. There you go. Um, you know, like before he plays halftime, himself in his sacks, plural. All right. However many sacks he can handle. Now we're really getting somewhere. <laughs> but not, like, I guess what my comment was more like, you'd think they practiced it because the Rams have to, that's something they do run. I, I hope they knew it was coming. I hope they weren't like, Oh, hurry up. Didn't, didn't practice against this. Or they like fell into this um, trap or whatever. They're like, Oh Goff, he's got a broken thumb. Cause Goff looked well, pretty good. You know, he had pretty good stats. I mean, they weren't great, but they're pretty good stats. And I think he had a higher passer rating than Rodgers in this game. Yeah, he didn't turn the ball over, and that's been key to their offense. So, um, I, I don't know if that's going to be like some Achilles heel against our defense moving forward, but I, I guess it, it, in some respects, the fact that it has been out there and we know that could happen or whatever, I'm trying to think of some silver lining. But look, even that's kind of splitting hairs because um, the defense played pretty well. Yes. Yeah. And, and well, I kept saying in the slack, during the game, like towards the end, I'm like, somebody needs to make a play. And boy, they did like right when they had to, yeah. they, there were times when they had to get pressure and they got pressure mm-hmm. and Gary had a great game. Mm-hmm. So did, so did Kenny Clark. And, so did I mean, Kenny look, Clark and, and Preston Smith, who had been loafing around almost the whole season had two passes batted down that were huge. Yep. So yeah. Um, but Gary in particular, I really like what's, what's coming on with him. Yeah, I mean he he's <laughs> I'm not I don't want to get too far ahead here, but he's going to give the Packers a very difficult decision this offseason when they're talking about possibly keeping Preston Smith. So yeah, because they they have an option, right? They have an option. Mm, it's good to have options. It's good to have the dual purpose, so you can decide what's best for you. Yeah, well, we don't have to worry about that right now. We're not going to talk about it in the future unless it's the Super Bowl. <laughs> twice hoi- twice now <laughs> and hoi- hoisting the trophy um twice about it's like beetlejuice if you say it three times and then be- it doesn't happen beetlejuice 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 or bloody mary is that the other one i don't know right so so uh w- one thing on the um on the offensive uh standpoint uh we had 484 total yards mm-hmm. and uh and i did Pardon me if you already said this, Jeremy. You probably did, but uh, but he I already saw... brought up sex. So go ahead. yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah. So no, but the uh, uh, but offensively, uh, we scored the most yards against the number one defense ever in playoffs. Yeah. Oh wow, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we doubled them in the total yardage. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Doubled them. Yeah, they had two forty four. We had four eighty four. You know what's interesting? That's um, crazy. <laughs> it is. And look, when we when we look when we talked about how well our offensive line played, I think Jeremy, you had alluded to it because I I didn't watch the uh, Seahawks Rams game, but it sounds like his offensive line got beat up. There were constant pressure, and that's part of a huge reason why they lost and why Russell Wilson struggled. So, I mean, if you did, so Rogers wasn't even sacked, was he? Nope. Only hit once. If you would have told me that he would got out of this game with zero sacks, I would have. I would have said no way. Right, and <laughs> I would have put the over under at like two. Well, nothing against the Packers' offensive line, but exactly just, their their pass rush is that good, you know, and yeah. they, they've 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 earned that right. So and the Packers have Packers. They, they their their all pro left tackle is out. Yeah, so so no, they've earned their right to be called the probably one of the better offensive lines in the entire league. Yeah, it's a damn. I mean, we already paid. You know, King's ransom for uh, Bakhtiari. Now, what are we going to do? We're stuck with him. No. <laughs> well, it um, is the playoffs. So, I mean, to your point on that, uh, anytime you can get out of a game with no, no sacks, no turnovers. That, yeah. You know, it's funny. Like, 
So Rodgers threw one pass. No, he threw two, two. passes two. that I don't know if they should have been picked because I I get they the feeling be. that those are those. Well, I get the feeling sometimes he's throwing these passes that maybe I'm nuts. Maybe I'm Pamela. Um, where <laughs> where he's throwing them, he's going, this isn't going to get completed, but it's not going to get picked off. Sometimes I wonder if he's like playing that 5D chess. But if you look at both the, the plays, I mean, the first one, Troy Hill had the ball in his hands. And the second the one, first, the Williams first one undercut definitely it. should have been picked. The second. And the second one, he undercut the route and came right in front of the ball. I mean, you sh- they should have had both attempts. And that and was, that was pretty, on the drive where we got three points. Right. And that was then 29 seconds left in the, in the first half. So that was a very instrumental drive in the whole game. Because if you take that away and, and, and say that they got the interception, and now we're coming into halftime. Only up sixteen ten. Does that change that dynamic? No doubt. No Coming doubt. out in halftime. No doubt. Yeah. Um, it, look at, at that particular point. That was like when because the Rams had just scored in like three minutes. They marched right down the field. I, yeah, you said twenty nine seconds, and I'm like, I really thought that they were just going to do what they usually do, which is just basically take a knee and go into halftime. I, I'll never. I, I put this even in the Slack channel. I I, I will never understand ever. If you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, why you would not try to get points on every drive? I, I don't care if you, if you got a, a second, and I'm talking about going into half or whatever, basically going into half, taking a knee or whatever. it's like, yeah. I think that's just dereliction of duty. Um, well, I felt that way when the Seahawks were playing the Rams last week because I think I think they I think the they, Seahawks they took a knee. I think they took a knee at half, or maybe maybe it wasn't them, but there was a, there was another no, situation. Yeah. Was it okay? It was okay. the Bear game. The Bears were down seven to three. Okay, they had yeah, to I, fall with little that's right. minutes to go. And that's right. Ran that's the right. Ball. And I was like, dude, you have the opportunity to score. You're not getting yeah. the ball in the second half, so yeah. score you. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I I knew there was there's a game last week where I was yep. like, it was that what? one. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen to a better team, the Bears. Um, who are who are they? Yeah, really. Um. Yeah, so I I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, he threw a – I think the first play that really got that going was – it was either Titanian or Devontae. I think it was Tanyan, yeah. Um, and then that was when he – again, the rushing touchdown that he had. When that play was unfolding, uh, the rushing touchdown that Rodgers had, I was like, this play's dead because he was in the pocket, and I was like, he's not going to be able to – he's not 10 years younger. You know, he's not going to be – but the juke movie put on that, that was impressive. And Very impressive. there was almost an exact identical play last week where Floyd um, did the same thing to Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson pumped and Lloyd kept himself composed and was able to tip the ball. Oh. This one, he just completely left his jock strap on the field. Oh, I know. So that the was, fact that Eric could do that impressive. and Russell Wilson couldn't, kudos. kudos. And the other thing that I think was really important, like with, uh, you know, the offensive line in general, but also just Rogers standing tall in the pocket. Cause Rogers is uh, uh, the older he's gotten in his age, the more he gets pressured. I mean, this is almost any quarterback, but they start to look at the rush and they start to, oh, yeah. you know, avoid the uh, jump out of the pocket early and all that. But he was in the end zone and I thought it was going to be a safety. I, I was know like, this. I was like, this is going to be a safety. I, and then he, he somehow, he threw a dart 25 and, yards. Yes. <laughs> and Great. right there, I was I was like, oh man, he's in the end zone. He's standing tall in the pocket and he's firing it down there. And that's that was that was like one of those little mental things that I saw that I was like, man, because I I was like, this is safety. This is stupid. But then <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I, I was. Because if you get a safety, you have to kick it off to them too. Ugh. Yeah. But it shows what I know. I thought he would throw it away. I mean, turning that into 25 yards. Yeah, he he didn't. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to like throw a 25 yard, you know, first right. pass. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I didn't think he would. It really looked like he was going to take a safety. And I'm like, you, I'm like, Rogers, you can't take a safety. Yeah. You know, got to know better. Than I that. think I think we always resort to the previous Packer teams where yeah. their confidence level just wasn't, you know, the confidence level was here. Right now, the confidence level of this team is nobody's going to stop us. And I, oh, truly. Truly, when you have that type of that type of confidence level in your own self and your team, the sky's the limit, and that's and why you, really they they I won. Think, you're exactly right, and I think you could throw in in the scheme. Mm-hmm. Look, mm-hmm. With, with McCarthy, it, it was always you know beat your man, you know got it. There was no deception, and after a while, it's just got a grade on you when you know you got 
you don't have the talent. When McCarthy, look, when McCarthy had the talent, you could smoke guys. But when you when you don't have as much talent, I, somebody made a comment where um, I think it was it was like one of the Fox guys or something like that before the game where they said, you know, a lot of the like the, the I'll call it the McVeigh or the um, Lafleur, whatever offense you want to call it, whoever came up with it or, or perfected it, one of these young guys, these young bucks, um, they it, it's very quarterback friendly, but it's designed for quarterbacks that aren't as like either cerebral or just gifted. And so it's like when you insert a guy who's already a hall of fame quarterback into an offense like this, they're like, it's not fair. And that's, <laughs> that's so. And I was like, man, that's, that's a good way to look at it where it's, it's like, I mean, Rogers, Rogers was stuck in like a high school offense with McCarthy at the time, but he was so good. He could elevate that. It's like, if you give him a decent, and I think team, I like, think you that could, is like a cheat code. I think you can honestly say, um, just looking back on his career, this is the best season that he's had at 37 years old. Better than 15 and one, no doubt. Yep. But and the team itself is better. That that year he was look, he was out of his mind, but we all know top to bottom, he had his number five receiver was a lot of teams number two. Um and he had Jermichael Finley at tight end and yada yada. But um, but their defense was awful that year. Our defense Started off somewhat awful, but it's peaking. It's pretty good. Peaking at the it's right time. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Special teams. Uh, as long as they catch the ball and punt the ball and, and kick they can the make some extra points, points. Goals, I don't know what the hell happened on that thing. Mason golden. Crosby hurt his shoulder on that. Yeah, that didn't look good. You know, I mean, actually, just so. Yeah. 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 He got tackled all weird. And he hurt his shoulder. Your well, your boy, your favorite boy. Well, just so you know, we do have a practice squad punter and kicker all at the ready, so we're good. And he makes just as much money as Crosby out of here. <laughs> then so sign me the, up for that, then. So the, so they're, so they're paying this guy Look right at now. 4 million I hate, to, I hate to break it to you, but they're paying this guy the same as Crosby, and he's just sitting there in the wings waiting. Oh my god! No, but but one thing I did like to see. So I think J.K. Scott only had like two punts. One or two punts, but uh, which is good. I would, well, exactly. He is the guy that I would like to pay to do nothing. Well, <laughs> and you know what? They've done that all year. Rogers threw more touchdown passes than they punted the whole year. That it, it took over again. A, again, it took over again today. Has that ever happened? Rarely. If it did, it maybe once or twice, but <laughs> crazy. Um, but what I was going to say about J.K. Scott, though, he did. He. Had a great punt when we needed it. He put, he got he got one inside the ten yard line when we had to get it in the cold. So I'll give him credit where credits due. I don't know what the hell happened on the extra point snap, but the one one comment um, my, my my mom and uh, my, my sister they love Mason Crosby. I don't know why, but they love they, my mom has his jersey. Whatever. She's like, is he okay? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, he's gonna be okay. But he hurt his shoulder, and she's like, he's a kicker. And I said, well, that's one of those things where it's like a bad snap can cause a freaking injury to a kicker because it's a totally preventable, preventable and a totally unnecessary injury because of a bad snap. Well, I don't think it was so much a bad snap. It was a bad hold. He, he, JK Scott caught the ball and he just lost. He lost it. The, the snap was not that bad. Um, it was more of him just trying to catch the ball and put it on the ground that, that caused the laces trouble. out Finkel. Yeah. Finkel. Finkel and Einhorn. Yeah. yeah let's see you do it. Yeah, you know what's hilarious? Like I we talk think about, about that, I, and I give these guys as much. I know we've you know, talked. We talked about this before, I think. But like, have you ever like dang. tried tried to kick a field goal, like an actual field goal? Just even catching it, and placing it like that. I know. Under under those with under the laces that, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. Under that pressure. Wow. Um, so speaking of which, uh, there was just a doink in the Ravens game. <laughs> Yeah, Tucker missed his. Who the first Ravens played the Bills? The, yeah. the Bills, right? I don't know get what happened, but my brother just just uh, messaged me and said, "Doink." <laughs> no, before we came on our our podcast, they uh, he was about a forty some yarder and he doinked it. Yeah. Oh well, maybe there were two then. Oh, there was two. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe I got the message late. I don't know. I don't know. There's a there. It, it could be a double doink. <laughs> double doink. Oh, the Bears hate that. Yeah, do you remember? You oh, yeah, he did miss two field goals so far. Really? Justin really? Tucker, the most accurate kicker in NFL history, has missed two. Wow. Ravens kicker? Yeah. Um, Not good for them. 
Do you? That reminds me of the double doink thing. Do you remember that? Uh, <laughs> nobody will. Do you remember, nobody ever that. forget that. <laughs> do, no, but do you remember that that uh, that uh, like promo video that Brett Favre did with uh, the Bears? Like, uh, yeah, before the season started, and he may, he brings out the prop. He's like, it's a double <laughs> doink, and then he's like sh- showing it. To, it's hilarious, and then uh, and then he he takes he takes the. Uh, Whatever the, the like the speaker, it's like a Bears like a uh, Alexa speaker, and he, he tries to throw it at the stadium, and he like heaves this pass, and a bird comes by and picks off. And they yep, intercepted. <laughs> yep. Oh, that was great. That was great. That whole that whole, you guys got to go back and watch that promo. I know it was, it was like, great. Yeah, it was I remember. Great. It. They go. They had the the, the Brett Favre interception calendar, and they go, "It's a full calendar year of all your interceptions." <laughs> so good oh man oh uh but yeah he had that like a double doink prop that he's showing oh i gotta love it um yeah i you know it was pretty cool to see at the very end too was um when rogers when they knew they had the bag and he was kind of you know it was only six thousand or nine thousand i guess they said because they had six thousand fans and then three thousand essential workers so i guess it was up to oh, 9, is that what they did okay i think i'm pretty sure Okay. Um, I was going to make a Pam, a Pam Oliver joke. And say, she's an essential worker, so she was there. <laughs> oh my I, god! Oh, uh, I know. Really, we hope you're okay. God, Pam you're. You, we hope you're, you're okay. Pam. You're, you're terrible human. You're brutal. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, I make fun of everything. I'm, my, my comedic sensibilities. Uh-huh. Uh, that is true. You do make fun of yourself as well. So, I'll oh god, that. I make fun of everything. Oh, that makes it okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's about time. Uh, he, speaks, he speaks the truth. Yes. <laughs> uh, but what I was going to say is when Rogers knew and he was kind of going, it, you could tell that he's um, obviously, I think, playing the NFC Championship game at home and knowing he's going to it is, is pretty cool. That was kind of neat to see. Um, you know, you wish you were. Could, I mean, boy, it's look, it, in a normal year, I would have been at this game. And uh, me too. And could you imagine being in that stadium? Oh, it would have been epic. We would have been losing our minds. It would have been so great. <laughs> it, you, you, we forget that Rodgers is 37. That was the age that Favre played his last game. You know, I look, Rodgers, with today's NFL and how he takes care of himself, all that good stuff, barring any catastrophic injuries in the future, there's no reason that he can't play as long as Brady. I, I don't see how – the guy's 37, and he almost put up 50 touchdowns. With five picks, it's – Well, you know, there's play, and there's, you know, play. I mean, we want Super Bowls, you know? Oh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So uh, – There's there's play for Super Bowls, and there's play for sacks. Oh. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no need to apologize. We got to, we, like I said, we are equal opportunity uh, haters and or make make fun of her. Make fun of hers. <laughs> make fun of her. I, I make fun of you. you know, I definitely make fun of myself. I'm I'm an easy target for for me in, in addition to you guys. So, anything else on uh, on this game? Should we look Do you forward? Think so. Um, I well, I, AJ Dillon. Um, oh yeah, what's going on with him? He has an injured quad, um, so I guess right now it's to be determined. He has, he, what he has a status. quad, so he, he could be back for next week. He could be back for next week with a quad injury. Yeah, with a. Quad. I mean, what, they did an injury timeout, but then they didn't show him come off the field or anything. So it's like, okay. Well, and you it, know what? It, it, I th- I thought it was kind of unfair that they were. It's officially a fumble, but if you watch the exchange, he didn't put it in the bread basket. Rogers did. He got it like up above. Yeah, his yeah, arm, I did. See and then he was, was kind of struggling with yeah. it. By the time he got, you know, yeah, in, in real time, it wasn't the cleanest handoff. Right. I'll definitely give you yep. that. Yeah. Um. Uh, but you know, on that subject of of AJ, the the way they use the running backs today was brilliant. Um. I mean, they used they used all three. I, I think Aaron Jones was 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 the quote bell cow, I guess if you want to say, and he looked great. Fourteen, but yards. even but even um, look, we're, I, we're spoiled in that way. They were saying after, and I think in the in the immediate post game, the Bradshaws and whoever else these these talking heads are, but that it's, they did make a good point about this that this is the best running game Aaron Rodgers has ever had. 
Um, now, Eddie Lacy was really good, but he was just one guy, and he was he was kind of a one type back. But we got with with all three of these running backs, and let's 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 hope and assume that AJ Dillon's good. But even, even without him, that worst case, I mean, uh, Aaron Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams are fantastic. Just think about this, like. This is one of the best rush defenses they had like in the league. Yards rushing in this game. Over, I was just gonna. It? I was just gonna go over that. Yeah. So Aaron Aaron Jones had was one yard shy of a hundred. He had ninety nine yards. Uh, Jamal Williams had sixty five. Dylan had twenty seven. All uh, Jones averaged seven point one yards per rush. Williams averaged five point four yards per rush. Jones Dylan averaged seven averaged yards four and a half. Carry. They had a total of thirty six carries for one hundred eighty eight yards. Now the wow. bad thing, the bad thing about that. Is that the the kneel downs that Rod the last three kneel downs that he had subtracted from their total yeah. output? So. Well, well, Rogers had some rushing in there too. He had the rushing touchdown. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's against the were they the number one rush defense? Or no, the they one? were the third uh, Wait, ranked they, rush. Yeah, defense. it's it's almost like. But we look. We pulled the pants down on the best defense in the league. That was pretty fun. Yeah, when you can see guys that are yelling at each other. And, and as early as it was in the second quarter, you know you have him up against the ropes. And, I think Donald had been pretty damn banged up. A guy like that, he you could tell he had no like. You don't take him off strength. the field. You know what I mean? When but you see you, him on the sideline, you're like, well, no. But if you watched him, he had no strength. I mean, he could take on double teams and throw both the guys off to the side. Tonight, Elton Jenkins was going mano a mano against him and just beating him up. You don't see that on Aaron Donald. So his rib injury was worse than what we all anticipated. He might have been like and 50%. It, right. I mean, he was not the same player. Um, no way in heck was he the same player. You know, it, did that contribute I'm to not gonna him? I'm not going to complain. Right. I mean, I, I would rather beat everybody at full strength, but, you know, I, I, that's yeah. not the NFL. So, <laughs> yeah, you no, know, you hit the nail on the head. It's like it's not who you play. It's not just who you play. It's when you play. For right. Pete's sake. Right. Um, that's for darn sure. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much, I guess I got all, unless you, for this game, unless you guys get anything else, but. Yeah. I mean, uh, offensively, uh, how. It was a very entertaining game. Very entertaining game. You know, and, and you didn't feel like any point of the game we were, we were blowing them out really, or we were, it was really that close, you know I mean? When Lazard dropped that ball, it, had he caught that, that might've been the beginning of like a steamroll. We were really, um, but, but again, I'm splitting here. This team has the mojo, man. You could just you could just tell they have that mojo that they're just, the only thing that can beat them is themselves at this point. The only thing we have to fear is fear. <laughs> so no. that would be FDR. Elliot's favorite. Oh god. Oh god, I gotta look, I gotta I gotta bring this up. Oh no. Uh, I'll show it to you after this, but I'll oh, still bring no. it. So I made a uh <laughs> No, actually, I won't. It's not even. This is the absolute Packer podcast, not the absolute political. Oh God, here it comes. So, uh, do you guys want to? Uh, uh, you, you have any words about the Saints, Bucks, or any of the other? What well, game? This is a good segue. Uh, look, bring on whoever. They're both warm weather well, teams. I mean, the well, Saints so, are a so what, team, but so what I thought we would do is just give predictions on. The Saints versus the Bucks themselves, who we think mm-hmm. will win, what the scores will be, and then uh, the you know Packers versus Saints, Packers versus Bucks, because it'll be one of them. This is uh, this is Tampa Bay at the Saints, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. How are they fans? Like a lot of fans? About the same uh, same amount yeah. we're going to have. I think About so. Thousand yeah. ish, yeah, yeah. roughly. Yeah. I mean, that's they're going to have fans, nearly... but not many. But that's not nearly what it normally would be in the Superdome, that's for sure. Right. That is – look, if they were – so that's a mitigating factor, honestly, is a lot of – having not a lot of fans there. But I would think that's going to be a pretty close – now, it has, has – uh, Saints have beaten them twice, right? Mm-hmm. It's hard to beat a team three times. I do know that. Um, it's also hard to beat a team that's beaten you twice. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Very well said. Look at you. Nicely done. Big brain over here. <laughs> the tech no guy. With the... Hey, there's, there's no fluoride in his water. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's funny. Obviously, it's, it's, it's obviously, like, 
I, it's I one pick, of those rhetorical things, though, right? You say, uh, like, it's like, yeah, it's hard to beat him three times. And it's like, so, yeah, but you haven't beat him at all. You suck. So if we're going, <laughs> if, if we're going to rates predictions, I'm picking 29-24 Saints. So. I'm inclined for a, a close game, and I am inclined to pick, pick the Saints, too. Mostly because it's at the same. Man, but I don't. It's gonna be a close game. I gotta think. I just yeah. What'd you say? What'd you say was? Would you? Put? I, I said twenty nine, twenty four. I think I consider that to be close. And I, think I that, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, and, I, yeah. and, I th- and I think that that's uh, um, and I and I and it, whatever. I don't know how other people come up with, the, with scores, right? But is I that receiver I, for the Saints? Is he back, Michael Thomas? Yes. Yeah. Is he back at full strength? Pretty cool. ish. Yeah. Because we did when we played him. He did not. Play. He was out. Yep. Right. So yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Um, <laughs> no, I mean that's that's um, look. I it, as funny as I said, I'm not terribly worried about that because we got Jair Alexander, who's an All Pro. Sure. Um, yeah. But with with regards to this game, and he's in it, and he was in our, I'm going to pick. I'm going to say Saints uh, 35, um, Tampa Bay 27. Wow. Um, I was just gonna. I was just gonna. Uh, chime in and say that the uh, the Saints offense has been really off uh, the past month, I would say. Um, they've struggled. Drew Brees, yeah, his arm yeah. strength, I mean, that yeah. that he's shown that this will be his last season. Um, and, and granted, a lot of it was missed with Michael Thomas not playing, but their offense is, is real sketchy at this point. Like you, Even with Kamara, huh? Even with Kamara. I mean, mm. he's not getting the ball all that much. You know, last week I think he had uh, – 14 carries, 87 yards. So I, mean, I know Drew Brees you know, can't throw the ball worth dink anymore, but no, he's a, he's, and he's a great quarterback. He's a great quarterback, but I mean, when they come up here, they're going to have to, you know, run the ball. Well, I'm um, talking 35. This, this, my prediction is, is saints versus Tampa Bay. Yep. Yep. And I got, I got one step ahead. Um, uh, I was just going to say the, the saints office is not playing well. The Tampa, Tampa Bay's defense is, is really good. Um, so I don't think it's going to be high scoring as you guys say, but I'm going to go actually uh, 20 to 17 bucks. Mm. So that is a big difference, but yeah. Oh, look, full disclosure. I don't, I do not follow much of the rest of the league outside of like cursory stuff and knowing the, the, um, the, the superstar players, if you will. Um, so I would definitely defer to almost anything outside of the Packers to Jerry. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, I that that game is like a toss up for me. I mean, I granted the Saints have beat them twice this year, but well, we're in the playoffs. It's a different year. And the last game against the Bears, I was really I mean, the Bears have a good defense, but we threw up 30, 35, 36 against them, and the Saints could even muster three touchdowns. So, you know, if you and you were that they were at home. So yeah, I got you. They're, I'm not, I don't have a lot of confidence in their offense carrying that team. They're going to be relying heavily on their defense. And that's where I think the, the tide that swings to Tampa Bay's favor. Just my prediction. I got you. Uh, uh, look, I, I guess I would, I would rather have the saints mm-hmm. because they're a dome team. And, and to your point, you did, you did bring up that, you know, um, Drew Brees can't throw the ball like more than 15 yards down the field. Um, I'm not going to lie. The thought of Tom Brady, cold does not make any difference to him. The guy's, I I, I don't like the thought of him at Lambeau. Um, It's not to say that I'm like necessarily scared, but if I'd, I'd much rather play this. I don't know about much rather, but I'd rather play this. Okay. Yeah, I would too. And it's not, it was, it wasn't that long ago, two years ago that they walked off the field in Kansas city and sub, I mean, it was like teens, um, so he played pretty well in that game. So I don't think the cold is going to affect him one way or the other. Brady or Breeze? Brady. Yeah, the cold is not going to. I mean, he played 20 years in New England. Right, <laughs> right. He played. Okay, so he... so uh, next one, you guys can, can keep going, but just ruminate. Uh, next one we're going to do is uh, Packers v. Saints. Okay. I'm going to say. So I'll, I, I'll do my first. I already wrote mine down. So, okay. uh, um, so I said 35, 27 Packers and, you know, and I, I, I guess I really wasn't thinking too much. I maybe should say, I'll, I'm even going to revise this. I'm going to say 35, 23 Packers <laughs> taking into I'm account. About, I'm about at the same spot because I taking into account what Jeremy said about their offense, uh, rethinking uh, the saints offense. I'm going to give the Packers a little more of a boost. 
the only you know look we beat the number one defense they were slightly beat up I I, I think the Packers they they can and they should score thirty points mm-hmm. against should. any team should um, mm-hmm. yeah can and should it's mm-hmm. I I I think I'll I'll yeah t- for for Saints thirty five twenty one thirty five twenty one um. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't feel as confident about the offensive output as you guys do. Um, if the Saints come here, I will say that the Packers win uh, twenty three to twenty. Tampa they got a good. They got a good defense. Um, can't hold them down from there. So Tampa Bay. I, um, I don't think we're going to put up thirty against Tampa Bay. Um, that'd be tough. Although you know, I'm going to put it right at thirty. 30, 30 to uh, thirty to twenty four. If we do Tampa Bay, okay. You want to go, Jeremy? Sure. Um, okay. Tampa's offense is loaded. Uh, Antonio Brown's in shape now. Um, uh, Michael Evans is all pro. Chris Godwin's pretty damn good. They have two tight ends that are Pro Bowl level. They got weapons. The galore for t- t- uh, for yeah. The only the only thing that that helps, in my opinion, is that Brady's a goddamn statue and he's old. You get pressure on him, he's not going to do anything. But yeah, got to get pressure on him. That's I mean that goes for any quarterback, you know, pretty much. But um, but he is immobile and always has. Yeah, been. and now he's yeah. forty three. Yeah, he's a pocket he's a pocket quarterback. He doesn't move around much. But um, I I think if if Brady comes up here, it's going to be a high scoring affair. I'm going to say Packers. Uh, 37 bucks, 31 Ooh, Packers, shit. 37 bucks, 31. All right. Uh, and I'm going to say Packers are all for blood Packers, 40 bucks, 16. I love it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you know what? I never want to hear the word Tom Brady again. Yeah. I'm so I, dumb I with could, that guy. I could. Second so you're, you're, and you're I right. do not, and I do not want, them to be playing in their own stadium for a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. No. If they didn't have Tom Brady, I'd be like, nah, you know, maybe I'd be pulling for him. No. 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 So you're off the Tom <laughs> Brady fan club then. I what? was never I was never on the Tom Brady fan club. <laughs> what is um what is uh Tampa Bay's rec uh like stats for do you know what their stats are like for offense? Defense? Yeah, they're really o- good. Offense they're I think top 10 in pretty much everything except for rushing offense. Defensively, they're the, the top ranked rush defense in the league. Uh, pass defense, they're Oh, they are. Average. Look what we just did. They're average. So. But Whatever. a very similar, you know, as far as structure and personnel, a very similar defense that we today showed the whole world we can beat. That we beat. select. So do you think like uh, uh, as far as like defensive scheme, Jeremy, like do you think that that uh, McVay is, uh, you know, a better coach than uh, is it Aaron's that's there? Is that Aaron's? Defense, that's, defense, that's, Aaron's? He's, a, he's an offensive. Yeah. Well, McVay is an offensive guy. Uh, yeah. This is another offensive guy. As but well. so. Uh, OK. OK. So you don't think that they factor in at all in the defense? I'm sure they have executive. I mean, privilege but i'm sure that um you know mcveigh worries about the offense because just like just like lefleur yeah same yeah, thing here okay lefleur okay. calls the plays and he pretty much leaves the the defense up to the defensive yeah here. okay okay same thing goes for la same thing goes for tampa same thing goes for new orleans so okay okay yeah but I, you know I, I think you bring up a good point because um a team is truly uh kind of built by your head coach's philosophy and you know it's weird Aaron's, though. Aaron's is an annoying guy. I don't like him. I didn't like him when he was in Arizona and, and he beat us um, in 2015. But uh, yeah, he's he's the whole dynamic there with him and Brady. You can tell there's some there's some uh, friction there. You know, like there's they're not cohesive. They're not a hundred percent like Lafleur and Rogers are this year. Um, so I think that's that that's a huge thing. I think people kind of overlook is how your play caller and your and in his case, has had coach get along together because yeah. that's Aaron's is a you know. freaking blowhard. So, so is Tom Brady. Well, they make a perfect match then. Two blowhards. Just, I'm just kind of done with them. It's like, yeah, he's good, 
uh, and I think he was in a great situation that boosted him up at times. And they're lo- they're loaded on offense. I mean, look, he, he yeah. picked Tampa Bay. Look, yeah. like Jeremy said, it's like they got weapons all over the place. He picked so. Tampa Bay because he knew that was the best place to go because in New England, he didn't always have the best re- uh, uh, receivers to throw to. I mean, right. he had Randy Moss and Rob Gronkowski and, and Julian Edelman. Not taking away from that, but the whole, like, you throw their offensive skill positions in a bowl this year, and it's better than anything New England ever had in his career when he was back. ever. Could be talent wise, not production. Yeah. Just maybe wise. if you take maybe the best year the Tampa Bay or that uh, the New England ever had, I think you could probably put it right up there. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah, did they ever have they, when they had? Uh, they never had Gronk and Randy Moss together, did they? No, Gronk was after Moss. God, could you imagine that? Holy man! Yeah, that kind of situation would be crazy. All right. You guys have anything else? It's past Andy's bedtime, so I'm uh, I'm going to have to cut him off. He's going to start sounding like Pam Oliver. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, see, that, that was well played. <laughs> well played. Damn. Now, 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 <laughs> now, full disclosure, we want to make sure Pam Oliver. Okay. You betcha. In, in this instance, uh, let's hope she was drunk and not having a mild stroke. Well, she was in Green Bay, so. Right, I I, ho- I hope. And no, knowing the power of the or ta- tired or cold, yeah. no, knowing the power of the tavern league, I'm gonna bet alcohol. <laughs> the power the tavern league the power. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope I hope our predictions pan out, except for Jeremy's prediction about the Bucks. I don't, I do not want the Bucks. Just for you guys, I want Tom Brady to come here so bad. God. I'm rooting for that hardcore. Well, and if he does come here, I want my prediction to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I, I'm 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 uneasy about all of these numbers. Just for the record, but you know what though, there would be no better way to end this discussion about Tom Brady than to bring him up here and send him on packing. Yeah, beat him decisively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be nice. Yeah, and I, right Go now, I don't, yeah, I don't think anybody <laughs> can beat him. Now, now is the is the uh, the Chiefs game is tomorrow? Yep. Who are they playing? Brownies. Browns. Yeah. I want the Browns to win, but I don't. Well, I, let, the, we should pick the rest shot. of these games. You really want to? Yeah, let's do it. Like you want scores and everything? Yeah. Jeez, we're going to go all night. You know, well, well, no, you know what? You know what? Well, just, well, just, well, just straight up who's going to win. Let's just not do, okay. let's not do scores. I, I think the Chiefs are going to win, but man, like I've said, I really, I don't give a rat's ass. About <laughs> I really don't. Either one of them. But the, but the Chiefs. They remind me so much of our 2011. Yeah, yeah, I would love for the Browns. To but play. but again, it's like it's easier for me to say just based on our horrific history of us being Packer fans to say they're going to get upset tomorrow. But I don't think they will. Um, look, I'd be I'd be shocked if they got beat. Um, that's not to say it can't happen, but I'd be shocked. So I think the Chiefs are going to are going to win. So it depends on what actually happened, right? Like, do do we think that that the that the Steelers beat themselves, or do we think the Browns? Yeah, beat what the happened to the Steelers? Oh, the Steelers just came out, and I think they. Well, I think they, they were, were still. Remember, they were ten and zero to start the season. Yeah. Then they went like one. But and if you, I mean, Elliot, you watched the game. The very first play, they snapped the ball in the end zone. The I second know. series, they that throw was a pick. like the Super Bowl. When it was Denver and <laughs> right know, for know, first play, first play. <laughs> yep. And I remember looking at Peyton Manning. He's like, oh. Crap. Yeah, and he and could he got, run. Uh, and they got annihilated in right. that game. Oh. Yep. Yeah, so I don't see the Browns like shutting them down like that, but I also don't see the Chiefs blowing them out either. Like th- they played really well. The Browns played really well. You know, even when the Steelers started to stage a little bit of a comeback, that you know they held their own. Could you imagine so, if it was Browns Bills and the AFC Championship? That would be wow. so great. It would, but it would be like. Wow, is it 1988? <laughs> that, that'd be, that's I how long be it's been, right? I think that'd be great. I think I think it would. I think it'd be good for the league. So all that, you know? it's hard for me to separate like what I want. You know, same thing with like the Saints and the Bucks, right? So what's it's hard the score for... of the Ravens game, by the way, right now? I don't know. I well, I want to predict that game. So let's not let's oh. not look. It's all right, all right. Well, I predicted the I predicted the Bills on that. I, I didn't have a score, but I was thinking the Bills would win that. So yeah, I'm gonna go. I have no idea too. I'll, I'll go on your guys' coattails, Bills. Well, it's not much of a prediction if you're just going off of what we say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> 
Okay, so then okay, uh, so Chiefs and the Browns. Chiefs and the Browns. What do we got? I really want the Browns, but man, I think I, I do. But I, I do too. But I honestly think it'll be the Chiefs, and I think it'll be closer. Than I wouldn't the, be surprised if the, the Chiefs. The Chiefs are weeks. favored. The Chiefs are favored by like ten points. But really, but I think I think it'll be closer than that. But I think. I think they're going to put up 40 points. I mean, I could see the Browns putting up 30 points. Easy. Right. Yeah. It's going to be a high scoring affair, I think. You could. I'll just say 40 to 30. Well, you're going to do a score, huh? I'm just going to yep. go and say that the Chiefs are going to win. You know what I'd like to know? Yeah. What was the spread of the Packers versus the Giants in 2011 in that oh, division? God. Game? I'd love to know that. I'm, I bet it was double digits. I bet it was probably 10, 12. And we got blown out, basically. Don't put your. Oh, jeez! Don't say things like that. <laughs> that was so disappointing. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> let's not talk about that. All right. Well, it's in, okay. it's in the it, it happened. It's in the past, baby. Yep. So then we okay. have NFC Championship. We have well, you guys have the Saints and the Packers, and then yep. I think our predictions were the Chiefs and the Bills. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Are we going? So are we are we picking Chiefs over Bills? I, yeah, I mean the Bills are up and coming, no doubt. I think this is this is a, a breakout game where the Bills actually topple the defending Ooh. champions. Ooh, we're here first. I'm, I'm going with the hot team right now. Going with I the mean, hot team. Hard to bet against them, but I man, the Bills. I, I it's you know again it's like separating what you want from like reality I, yeah yeah like i i'm still gonna go with the chiefs but i mean they gotta win two games i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna go with the chiefs too i mean i'd love to see the bills do it yeah i would yeah god i hope you're right <laughs> i hope so too you know what, what 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 makes me nervous about the, the chiefs too is like i remember last year i was going to it was actually the packers versus seattle last year uh divisional playoff game and we were like in the this tent they had outside. This was pre COVID, and in the tent, and they had the Chiefs and the Texans game on. The Chief, the Texans were up like twenty four to nothing in that game, oh. and they got their ass oh. blown out. Oh yeah, Patrick Mahomes threw like three touchdown passes in like two minutes. Yeah, or so, so just and they, they ended were up scoring twenty four zip. And, and then, then yeah, they beat them like the Chiefs, fifty to thirty. Right, I remember that. Was their game on? Like, what was? I don't remember the situation, but I ran. It was, to, but it was like threatening. I ran, You're like, oh, I, I, I ran to Walmart, and I was there like ten minutes I, between going in and coming get back out to the car. There were two touchdowns, all in the Walmart parking lot. Like it was. <laughs> It was. I'm like, this is it's like not, a unit. Of, it's like a unit of time. It was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is this is impossible. And I had to like double check that. I'm like, it was I did the same thing too. I go, I go, I I, I looked over it and I go and I looked at the TV and I said to my buddy, I said, I said, they're up twenty four nothing. And then like I walked around the back and I came back and it was like it was twenty seven to twenty four. Yeah. I'm like what? Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's scary. It's it's almost like. It, to me, it's almost like uh, you remember Usain Bolt, that sprinter. Oh my god! He like toy with people, and then he'd just be like, "Boom!" <laughs> just be like, "Ah, eh, right. whatever." I'm bored. It was, that's what it felt like. He had a second like, and third gear, you know, and it's it was ridiculous. Oh god, you know, speak of the devil. Uh, of when the Olympics were in Atlanta, um, do you remember Michael Johnson, the sprinter? And he was it, it was all hyped up, and and he won the gold in that. And they have this camera angle that's like really famous of him coming around the bend. And just trucking, and it's like that was when I lived in Atlanta, so the Olympics were there too, and it was like really cool. And it was that was a really cool moment. Were you sports? Yeah. Were you sports? the? Was that the one where you were the actual terrorist? No, oh, God, I watched that uh, <laughs> Richard Jewell. <laughs> no, you got no seriously, but I look. I lived in Atlanta when that was happening, or just outside a suburb. I, I I understand. That's why I'm Absolutely. asking if you were inv- you were involved in this. You are sort of a radical politics guy. Yeah, well, let's see. Richard Jewell, uh, number one, Richard Jewell's dead. And number two, Richard Jewell outweighs me by, uh, oh, you're talking about Eric Rudolph. I'm thinking this is a giant conspiracy and you were hey, the mind. Right. <laughs> Eric, But Eric Rudolph, he was the guy who actually did it. Yeah. He was an abortion clinic bomber. And 
I don't know how much you know about Eric Rudolph. I would nothing. I don't I would, know anything about it. I just remember no, there was some bombing and there was. I would I would encourage you to like just find out more about him because he was a, I mean he was a psychopath, but he was a really fascinating character. Um, I know plenty about psychopaths. I mean, on a level. <laughs> <laughs> a level that's beyond me is what you're getting at. And here's our segue into the Absolute Political Podcast. <laughs> Star. Well, this <laughs> Eric Rudolph isn't political. Um, it's all good. It's just funny. Like, I mean, again, I lived since I lived in in, in the South. There were those weird different dichotomies there. Like, you know, I, I think Brett Favre was I, there when I was. I, I think Rudolph. it's time for your pills, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm step. My, I put my foot in the bucket like eight times tonight. <laughs> what do you think, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah, crowd. a lot of emotion there. My, uh, uh, yeah, my, you, yeah, my my crowd. I lulled them to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That looks like the uh, the crowd at most of the NFL stadiums this year. Oh, that's funny. No, you got me pretty good. Hey, like I said, you got to be able to make fun of yourself. So it's all good. Will, it's all good. I will. I will tip my cap. We got we to leave some juice in the tank for next week. That's all I'm saying. Oh, there's there plenty go. of juice left. All right. Plenty all right. of juice left. There's plenty of juice left for two more games. All right. Go back, go. Podcast, podcast. Cheers. I know, right?